Hello there YouTube. This is Necrostevo and it's time for week 2 in season 9 of the GBA. Thank you all so much for watching. This week's opponent is going to be Tom Z, so you can find his information in the description. This is an opponent we have faced quite a few times, uh, so a little bit of a history with this opponent of course, uh, and by history I mean of him whooping our butt in the GBA. So. With all that, of course, comes our opportunity for a little bit of payback. So if you don't want to sit through the team builder, of course, there will be an annotation in the description to jump right to the battle. But these never take that long, so let's just jump right into it. Now, Tom's team is over there on the right if you need a quick refresher of that team. Of course, he has access to Mega Lucario, Tapu Koko, his first Z user, Weavile, Gliscor, Whimsicott, Latios, his second Z user, Araquanid, Drapion, Cloyster, Mesprit, and Caesar. So quite an offensive team, a lot of different options. And of course, uh, here's our opponent who sniped Mega Lucario from us at the outset. So what does that mean for our team? Well, that means that we need to hit him harder and faster, basically. Because with offensive threats like Mega Lucario and Tapu Koko and Weavile, it's really difficult to take those hits repeatedly. And so, especially when with Zemu's in the mix or his ability to just run hidden power, for example. So my team is going to be oriented around just kind of offensively overwhelming him. Uh, up first, we're gonna have a choice scarf, Xerneas. This Xerneas this week can run a modest nature for extra damage, but look at his team and then look at his switch-ins to my Xerneas, they are Few and far in between, basically the Caesar can come in and uh, we have things for Caesar too. So really I just need to wear down Caesar and then everything's in range for a Choice Scarf Xerneas. Uh, I do randomly have um, Calm Mind on there in case my Choice Scarf gets knocked off. That'll give me a secondary way to threaten his team, but really it's going to be clicking Moonblast 90% of the time in this battle. Uh, up next we have a Rocky Helmet Fortress. I managed to breed one with Hidden Power Fire, so that will be present here. Just as a, a check to the Caesar, I need something that can come in and not only punish him for going for U-turn, but also be able to threaten it, because he's going to most likely think that my Fortress can't do anything to him, and maybe try to set up, uh, or even he might run Defog on Caesar. Same story with something like Gliscor, they aren't going to um, expect Fortress to be able to do a lot. So that's why I went ahead and put spikes on there too, because if I can force him into that defog option, that gives me a chance to bring something else in and kind of punish him for going for the defog. Uh, I do have 60 special attack EVs on Fortress just to put a roll on Hidden Power Fire heavily in my favor to two-shot Caesar, and that's assuming he's max HP. Uh, it's very likely that he'll, he might even run um, Life Orb or possibly Banded just because of his priority options against my team. And that's why I also have bulk on my Xerneas. All that extra HP and a little bit of defense allows Xerneas to live hits from the Mega Lucario and the uh, Caesar as far as their priority moves go with Bullet Punch. So I'm hopeful that I can take that hit and then one shot him back if I need to. Now my main game plan is to not be in that position, which is why I also have a very defensive Mega Charizard here. This Charizard uh, has enough speed just to outspeed Gliscor and Tapu Koko, especially if Tapu Koko is max speed. If I get up a Dragon Dance, I cannot run it at plus one. But I don't have any attack in there, it's just all bulk. This time in the league, we do not have to Mega Evolve on the first turn. And so if he happens to bring a specially based Lucario, a non Mega Evolved Charizard will be able to switch in and take that hit better. Now that is dependent wholly upon if he reveals if he's physical or special before I have to bring out Charizard, because Charizard might get forced in here. But um, between tough claws and just naturally great physical attack, I don't actually need any physical attack here, and I can focus on being able to take those hits. Now Mega Charizard X is also a decent check to his Tapu Koko, depending on what Z move he decides to run, because even Charizard X doesn't really want to take um, Electrium Z boosted by electric terrain, for example, like a modest, but it's a good soft check to that. 
And um, by running Dragon Claw and Fire Punch, that allows me to have that offensive presence, but also not whittle myself down or get locked in an outrage or something like that to where I'm not able to switch out if I need to. Now, a possible lead, I actually haven't decided on what item I'm going to put on my Barbarical. I have a Shell Smash Barbarical with enough speed to outspeed a max speed uh, Araquanid if he ran Jolly, which he shouldn't, but Tom is very creative, so I'm not putting anything past him. I don't want to get blown back by like a max speed Bandit Araquanid or anything like that. So I have enough speed on there for Araquanid. I might go White Herb just because Barbarical does take a lot of priority from his team. Uh, Ice Shard from Weavile or the possible bullet punches from Lucario and Caesar, and of course Ice Shard from the Cloister as well. That does not take into account possible Vacuum Wave from the Mega Lucario which I will be in a precarious position if he decides to go special if I have Barbarical out. Um, the reason why Focus Sash is nice is because then I could just go on another coverage move and just lead with it, but he has so much priority on his team, I don't really like the idea of going Focus Sash against his team, because then, what, first turn he Volt switches out and I Shell Smash and he goes out to something. So I don't like that either. Uh, I'll have to think about that a little bit more, but I'm kind of between a few different items there. After that, we have a double dance Landorus Therian with enough speed to outspeed a uh, Scarf Coco or a Scarf Latios or a Dragon Dance Latios at plus one after I get a Rock Polish up. And this just Z Fly here, just because he doesn't have that many switch ins to it, like his only resist would be his Tapu Coco, and that's going to take a lot of damage from it. So uh, that's just kind of an offensive option that I liked. And then finally, we have. Adamant, Choice Scarf, Reckless, Me, and Xiao. With just a few filler moves there, this Pokemon is going to be clicking High Jump Kick the majority of this battle. And similar to Xerneas, I'm kind of doing Dual Scarfers again this week. But the idea here is just to severely punish him switching out. Because uh, he doesn't have a good swap into Adamant, High Jump Kick, boosted by Reckless. I was even tempted to go Life Orb. But when I go Choice Scarf here, it allows me to have a secondary check to Tapu Koko and the Latios. Granted, I'm forced into my secondary coverage moves against those two Pokemon. But even Tapu Koko is too KO'd by Adamant High Jump Kick when it's Reckless boosted. And then the, the Latios isn't, but it takes a lot of damage. So I just want to kind of force them into switching around a lot, especially if I'm able to get up Stealth Rocks or Spikes with my Fortress and keep those up. I'm expecting this to be a very fast paced game just based on the way that his team is and by the fact that my team cannot take a hit. So um, as far as what I'm expecting him to bring, I'm definitely, I, I have two fairy types. He has two steel types with priority. I could certainly see Mega Lucario and his Caesar coming to this battle. Um, Weavile is also a great check alongside with Tapu Koko with Hidden Power Ice to my Landorus Therian form. So I could see any of those four coming. As far as secondary options go, Mesprit is a pretty decent lead against my team. Uh, I do have several options against it as far as leads go, but he's able to tech onto it some good coverage moves. And so I, it is possible he would bring that. Um, really, I don't see something like uh, his Whimsicott or the Araquanid coming. If they did come, I would see them both as more bulky pivots, especially with Whimsicott's ability to set screens or support the team. Araquanid can run Sticky Web, which are okay against my team. I'm not really worried about Sticky Webs with this lineup that I have. Like I have Defog on Xerneas and Rapid Spin on my Fortress. But if he brought it, I would have to get rid of it just so that my Scarfers could be effective, of course. Um, and that, of course, leaves the Gliscor, which that could come as well. I don't like Gliscor as much against my team because it's a little bit passive and something like Xerneas, for example, just punishes Gliscor for coming in. Um, and of course, Gliscor is not able to one shot a Barbarical. And so he might even outspeed me, hit me, I get up my shell smash and then I one shot him back with liquidation. So um, I think he has to be careful with allowing me opportunities to set up as well. So it's kind of going to, we might be in a position of exchanging Pokemon every other turn or so, but that's what I expect from the battle. And I hope you guys enjoy the team builder. So let's go ahead and get right over to the battle. 
Alrighty guys, so thank you so much for watching the team builder. If you did not have a chance to catch the team builder, let's just go over the team really quickly. We have a Shell Smash Barbarical with Focus Sash, is what I decided on. A Choice Garf Mian Shao with High Jump Kick and Reckless. We have our Double Dance Flyanium Z Landorus. A nice hidden power um, Fortress. We have a very, very, very defensive Charizard and of course our Scarf Xerneas. Now, I will admit, when I went into this battle, Tom's team kind of surprised me. Right away, we see no Caesar, and uh, I, he had some thoughts on why he didn't bring some of his other teammates. But I was definitely expecting Caesar and Lucario to come to this matchup, uh, just because of the pressure they could put on with their priority. So I was really pleased to not have to deal with that. And looking at the team structure, I was like, okay, either Tapu Koko or Latios are scarfed. One of them is definitely Scarf, and I need to figure out which one it is before I can enact my game plan. And so I decided to still lead all with me with Barbarical, just to put on offensive pressure right away, and uh, that would also hopefully dissuade him from going for entry hazards, hopefully. And then I was like, all right, so I need to make sure I keep the entry hazards off the field so that my defensive Charizard can check the Lucario. And if Coco is Scarfed, that makes things um, a little easier for my Landorus, and if the Latios is Scarfed, that makes things a little easier for my Xerneas. So really this was just that information gathering game. So if you haven't checked out Tom's channel, his information will be in the description for his side of this battle. But of course he does start out with Mesprit. And I was like, great, that probably means that it's a defensive Mesprit, which probably means that I outspeed and I should be able to two hit KO it. I do outspeed with Liquidation right away, which is great. I really, really wished I had just clicked uh, Shell Smash. Granted, I couldn't have known that at the time. I just wanted to get damage on Mesprit in case it was really bulky. Because um, that way Xerneas could revenge kill it later on. But even if he... I think that was like almost a max, max roll type deal right there. Um, that Liquidation did a lot of damage. And I just went for Liquidation again, knowing I might get a defense drop if he swapped out. He brings in Cloyster, and I was like, wow, this is a bulky Cloyster. Because I thought Low Kick was going to do a lot more damage than that. And unfortunately my uh, sash gets broken here and now I can't kick shell smash against the cloister because if he goes for rock blast again or like hydro pump or something there's a chance that he might knock me out and so I'm just gonna go for stone edge here thinking that he might switch into Latios trying to predict the water move and the fighting move and stone edge would have caught anything coming in um, and he brings in the mesprit just to sacrifice it because I don't have to go for Stone Edge again at that low of HP. And now we see his Coco, and I was like, all right, so let's let's just pay attention here. Obviously it outspeeds my Barbarical, and I'm going to go directly into my Landorus. The reason for this is is because if he tried to go for a covered move or something, the, he wouldn't go for Hidden Power Ice there in my opinion, because if I stayed in with Barbarical, I could blow him back. And so that basically leaves uh, a more neutral move like a Dazzling Gleam, or his electric type move. And so since I went out to Landorus, I'm immune to that Volt Switch. And since he swapped out right away, I was thinking that he was Choice Scarfed at that time. Um, so I was thinking that maybe the Latios was a Z user. Now I did misplay here. I really should have gone for Swords Dance. I went for the Rock Polish because I thought he would bring in his Latios, thinking that I would go for Earthquake. Uh, but he just goes right back to his Cloister. And I definitely underestimated Cloister's obscene bulk because I thought even without going for Swords Dance I could KO the Cloister and then have enough speed afterwards to outspeed anything that he wanted to go for and then drop that Z move hopefully. I really should have stuck with my original Z move plan of just when I get Landorus in immediately go for the Z fly because then I would not have allowed Cloister to get its Ayapapa Berry up. But fortunately Barbarical is a pretty good answer to his Cloister because he doesn't seem to have any specially offensive water type moves. Um, and so that means I can kind of just come in here. I go straight for Stone Edge instead of bothering with Liquidation or anything because, again, I was worried of going for a low kick and letting the Latios or the Coco win for free. And that amount of damage on the Gliscor tells me immediately that this is an offensive Gliscor, and I'm going directly about into, into Landorus. Uh, and usually Gliscor would outspeed Landorus. This uh, Landorus that I have actually does not have perfect speed IVs. And so it, I didn't have it at level 100 yet, so I had to put a ton of uh, 
outspeed EVs into it because I was like, maybe I'll outspeed a bulky Gliscor. Maybe I won't, but I do want to make sure I at least be outspeed other, his other bulkier items, uh, Pokemon rather. And so I am able to outspeed him with this Landorus just because of the amount of speed I pumped into it. And it's a jolly Landorus, so I don't think he was expecting me to have that much speed, especially because Gliscor naturally outspeeds even a max speed Landorus. So that worked out really well because my Supersonic Sky Strike is able to eliminate the Gliscor before he sets up, which is fantastic. Now here, just to keep him honest, I am going to go for Earthquake against the Tapu Koko. This, um, this does force him to go for his coverage move. And since I see that his Dazzling Gleam, I'm like, all right, so let me at least confirm that he's Scarfed here. Because either he bluffed the Scarf really, really well by hard swapping out earlier when he had Bolt Switch into my Landorus, or he's going to have a coverage move here. And he does not have a coverage move for Fortress, but he does switch moves, and so I know he's not Scarfed. And that is a huge sigh of relief. Now, um, since I got my Fortress in, I am able to get rid of his rocks, which means that I will have an opportunity here to alleviate a lot of pressure from my Charizard, especially because he's going to Mega Evolve his Lucario and immediately go for Swords Dance, which was very, very, very scary. Uh, so I did get rid of his rocks and I put up my own. And if he kept on trying to set up, I was going to just start clicking Hidden Power Fire just to make sure he was in range of something on later on. Uh, with Stealth Rocks off the field, barring him carrying a rock coverage move, I was very confident that my Charizard would live any move that he went for from plus two because I was not going to Mega Evolve my Charizard. That way I would have resist the, fi uh, the fighting type move or the steel type move because he he has room for coverage but if he has coverage then he won't have bullet punch and then i can just bring in a scarf pokemon afterwards and, and revenge kill him so i knew he probably had bullet punch and so my charizard not mega evolved is able to just finish him off here as i live the plus two adaptability boosted close combat quite handily because of all that defensive investment and that is a huge threat out of the way now here I am going to Mega Evolve and see if I can get off a Roost. I could have just switched out um, and brought something in too here, but I was worried he would go for uh, a Z-move now that I've seen him switch moves just in case trying to catch something. And of course if he went for Thunderbolt instead of going for a coverage move, that would hurt just about anything that I had in the back. So I just stayed in. Charizard did a great job handling that Mega Lucario, even though I didn't have to Mega it to do so. Now that I know that he's not Scarf, we're going right into Xerneas, and I'm clicking Moonblast. Uh, we're in that phase of the game that I really wanted to be in, where now it's going to be kind of a, an issue of just trading Pokemon every other turn or so. Because here he sacrifices his Cloyster, which there's no way that Cloyster is living a Moonblast from Xerneas from that range, especially after Stealth Rocks. I know that his Tapu Koko is not Scarfed, and so it's probably a Z move, but if it's a Z move, I outspeed it. And so he brings it back in and I just go straight for Moonblast because I know he's not Scarfed and I know I outspeed. And I'm able to take down the, the Tapu Koko as well. And that means his last Pokemon is a Latios. And now he's in a checkmate position because the only way he could win is to be simultaneously a Z move and be Choice Scarfed somehow. Uh, and we do find out that his Latios is Choice Scarfed here at the end, but with all my defensive bulk on my Xerneas there, that's like a three or four hit KO with Psy Shock. And so one final Moonblast will end this battle with a 3-0 victory in the Victorian Shadow's favor. So that right there was one of those quick and powerful battles that are just trading Pokemon, not really, a, basically the opposite of my week one match against the Miami Dolphins. This one was much more aggressively played. And I think this battle was really um, one in the prep stage, which shout outs to um, uh, El Suzor and his idea because I was just running some different sets and he was like, eh, you should try practicing with Scarf uh, Xerneas some because originally I had Specs, for example, and I was even trying out a Calm Mind because I was confident in my ability to eliminate Lucario and Caesar. But he was like, just that idea of being able to clean up in the end with it instead of trying to break early. That worked out a little bit better here. Uh, I also want to have another shout out just for Goldoa Dragon for once again recording my match for me. I do appreciate it. 
And having watched uh, some of his videos, and I also got to watch his interview, I definitely recommend that you go check him out. So his information will be in the description, along with the information for Tom. So thank you again, Tom Z, for the battle. And we will look forward to our next week matchup, which is against Aaron Cybertron Zing and the Melbourne Rotom. So we'll have our work cut out for us there preparing for that battle. As you all know, he is definitely quite skilled in doubles, and he is no slouch in singles either. And um, during a lot of his time in doubles, he definitely has experience facing Xerneas too. So I have to make sure that I continue this this more uh, offensive presence here that we're having here. So thank you all so much for watching, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye now.